Uh, and we're back with the sports fall, and like I said before, with our NBA stuff. And since yesterday, when I was putting together everything, I mean, there's a lot of NBA stuff to talk about. The first thing I want to talk to is, I mean, I'm not going to talk too much All Star stuff now. When we cut, when we have our show next week, we're gonna have all your coverage of the All Star game. But I want to talk about we we know as of t- uh, today, Paul George, John Wall and Damian Lillard are going to be competing in the slam dunk contest. And, I mean, it's fun. It's what we've been saying for a long time. You need the stars to show up for this event. And it's finally we have, I mean, Paul George is such a good young talent. He's going to be really fun to watch in this game. John Wall and Damian Lillard, I mean, the problem is the guys who have been in it just haven't been relevant. No one cares. No one wants to watch Terrence Ross in the competition. People want to watch Paul George. People want to watch John Wall. So it's exciting, and I'm definitely going to be... I probably haven't watched the, all, the, the slam dunk contest in a couple years because there's just been no interest in any of the contestants. So I'll definitely be watching this year. Um, for What about you? Have you watched it? Not really. I mean, I watched when Nate Robinson was in it. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the day LeBron James takes part I know. in that. We, we need LeBron to be in that. I mean, you, he teases us in the games, yeah. and then we're like, can you please do the contest? <laughs> There's no good dunk contest since Vince Carter and Jason Richardson. Those are like the ones that are really explicit. Yeah. Michael Jordan, those are the good oh, ones. Man. And then you finally have three all-stars together taking part in this so this is great it really it's good for the event and they're changing up the rules a little bit they're going to do the teams are going to be split into the eastern and the western conference in the east you've got paul george john wall and last year's winner terrence ross and then uh, on the west side you have harrison barnes ben mcclemore and then damian lillard and speaking of damian lillard uh, a little bit more also he's going to be competing in all five all-star events which i think is really impressive and I think maybe a lot more people are going to be exposed to Damian Lillard. Maybe the casual fans don't really know much about him, but he's just part of the reason the Portland Trailblazers have been so good this year. It's all Damian Lillard and Marcus Aldridge. Damian Lillard is a phenomenal young player. I've been high on this guy going back to his rookie year last year. I really like this kid. He's a really tough, smart player. He's just a great young point guard. I'm really excited that he's going to be in all five events. I'll be cheering for him. But he's just a perfect guy. He's kind of was a guy who was overlooked in the draft. I think last year uh, a lot of people, more people paid attention to him, but out in Portland, they didn't have a great year last year, and he's definitely getting a lot more recognition. But I would definitely keep my eye on him in this event. I think he's a phenomenal player. Definitely going to be watching out for. But as we head closer and closer to the All-Star break, we've just been hearing a swirl of rumors. And the first one I want to go into is the Evan Turner. It seems like he's going to be a, he's a trade chip for about every single team. I mean, everywhere you hear his name is being mentioned as a trade chip. Rob, why don't you give us your take on Evan Turner? All right, so Evan Turner, this is his most productive year so far in the NBA. Yep. Averaging 17 points a game. But I think he's a big of a trade asset, Joe, because you know what? He's playing on a Sixers team that really doesn't have anybody besides Taddeus Young and Michael Carter-Williams. So you know what? He's expected to put up stats like that, especially with a weak team. You're going to have great stats like that. So I really don't know where he falls. If he falls anywhere, if he's going to be a good fit. The hum- I heard of the Charlotte Bobcats who want him. Down talking about trading possibly Sean Marion for him. But even if they trade Marion away, they lose their best defender. And Turner's not that great of a defensive player. No. I mean, here's the thing about Turner. I mean, uh, do you agree? I, th- I think he's a nice player. Yeah. But he's not like he's not worth giving up an, a good piece of your team for. No. I would say. So I mean, well, I think we agree on him. I wouldn't be. I, I think we're definitely going to see him moved. We've just seen too much talk of him going to be traded. So I, I expect him to be moved before the trade deadline is over. The next one we've heard is Paul Gasol's name. Paul Gasol's name all over the place. It seems like maybe the talk of him to the Suns was the big one, but. I, those have been shaky as of late, but I don't like the trade. If I was the Suns, I wouldn't want to make the trade. I think that they'd try to get like a first-round pick out of him. And if you're a team like the Suns, who is very young, you have a young team, uh, uh, you have a good new head coach, I think that the Suns kind of surprise everybody this year, and I think that they've got a good building block in place, and you definitely don't want to give up your draft picks because you need to continue to build onto this team. And if you continue to build onto this team and you don't give away your draft picks stupidly, I think you could build something nice in Phoenix. I really do. I think Jeff Hornacek is really knows what he's doing down there. You've got a good staple right there. I would not make this trade. Well, let's go to you. 
Um, you know what? This could work out for the Suns, man. Another way I wouldn't trade away a top draft pick, a first round draft pick for Pau Gasol. He's old. He is. And he's gonna be retiring soon. He's been banged up too. Yeah. But the thing regarding Pau Gasol, I'm sick and tired for the past three years. All you hear every week throughout the season, Pau Gasol's gonna get traded. He's gonna get traded. Well, the Lakers just trade him already because you know what? It's just starting to get annoying in the news about it. Trade the guy. Then this guy goes on a hot streak every year where they build up hit, trading him away. And you know what? They never trade him away. They end up keeping him for the season. But if they are, you know what? It's going to benefit them with that Suns trade because they'll get a Mecca Okafor in that trade. He has one year left on his contract. They could finally get more money for a free agent this summer and possibly LeBron James or Carmelo Anthony if they opt out. I think that those are fantastic points. I mean, if you're the, if you're the Lakers right now, you want to be as bad as possible because you're going to get a great a great pick in a fantastic draft, and you have the potential of signing a guy like LeBron or, or a big name guy in free agency. So if you're the Lakers right now, I just try to be as bad as possible, get rid of all those pieces because you could really build a team really quickly with the draft coming up and with potential free agents. So I think the Lakers, I think it would be a good idea to move. And he has played pretty well this year. He's been, he's going to be out for about two weeks. But overall, I think he's played well. Um, the next big talk has been the Bulls. It seems like they're they're just fire selling everybody. Taj Gibson's been uh, on the trade block. And um, I think part of them is I think that they're going to go out for a big free agent too. They've really kind of, they, they shipped off Luel Dang. So you could definitely tell that they're trying to make room to add some big players this offseason. But I like Taj Gibson. I think he's a good trade piece. Um, I think if you're a team like the Bulls who are trying to do this, it could be worth parting with. But if you want to be relevant again once you add those pieces, I think Taj Gibson's the perfect piece because he's a good defender. He can score if he has to. I, I think Gibson's a good player. Um, the big one, though, is everybody's talking about will the Miami Heat add a player. I want to hear what you think first. You know what? I'm really not too sure about the Miami Heat with adding a player because I don't know who they would be, who they would be able to really trade to get a decent player. That's really. the problem. Is they, there's not much room to trade. Well, I mean, they don't have a lot of pieces to trade. I mean, Michael would be a person that could be traded because you know what, Joe? He is a very effective player. We've seen when Miami's given him minutes what he can do. But otherwise, they're in age. Greg and I any way you could really trade. I mean, I, I guess... I, I think a lot of people I'm hearing are saying that they think the Heat are going to add another player, but I mean, and maybe they will, but I just don't, there's not a lot of room to maneuver. I mean, I saw a potential, maybe some people were saying that the a potential trade could be something like Chris Kamen to the Heat. I don't know, I mean, Chris Kamen, the Heat need length, and he would help out with that problem, but... I think overall the Heat are going to have to rely on Dwayne Wade being healthy and LeBron doing what he does. Chris Bosh Chris Bosch has had a phenomenal season, and if he continues to play the way he is too, Greg Oden is going to be key too. I've liked what I've seen when he's played, but uh, if he's healthy, that's going to be a big help. So we'll see what happens there. And moving on to the next topic, the Cleveland Cavaliers. They've just been a disaster this year. They fired their GM, Chris Grant, the, yesterday. And let, let's go. What, what is your just take on the whole Cavaliers thing? Well, right now at the Cavs, I think they did a decent job by firing the general manager. It's time to bring somebody new in because the team hasn't fit in well whatsoever. The person who needs to be traded out. Dion Waiters, you know, they talked about Andrew Bynum, how he was a big distraction to the team. Look at Dion reading an article from Lou the other day, and he says that they don't even care in practice. He got thrown out the other night from practice, and yet he still was playing his average minutes. And you know what? Dion Waiters was supposed to team up with Kyrie Irving, supposed to compete with him, and this guy, himself, he doesn't like playing with Kyrie whatsoever. And you know, he's the next person to be dealt out. This guy, we can now nobody there to play with. I mean, that's the thing. Is everybody loves to rag on LeBron for leaving Cleveland, but as you can see now, the Cavaliers are about as dysfunctional an organization as you can get. Dan Gilbert is just a, a crazy man. Hiring Mike Brown again, I never understand this. Why would you, if it didn't work out the first time with the head coach, 
How is it going to work out the second time with less talent? I mean, you could give anybody, you could give me LeBron James, and I'd figure out a way to win a couple games. It's not that hard when you have the best player in the world. But, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't think, I think it's unfair. I always thought it was unfair to hate on LeBron for that kind of thing. But he, he showed you. Part of the reason he left is the dysfunctional organization there. I mean, they have, they just can't get their act together. And it, it's sad to see. But I just think, Cleveland fans, there's no way LeBron's coming back to you, so you better hold out some more hope. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about for the NBA is though, teams have got the team that you think has got to make a final, a good push going into All Star break. The team for me is, although I don't know, is the Knicks. I mean, I don't have too high hopes for the Knicks to make the playoffs, but if they do want to make a push, they've got to do it now because the second half of the season, they have 18 road games the final half of the season, only 11 home games. So they're going to be on the road a lot, and that's a lot of travel for a team that's struggled. And if they want to get their act together, that's going to be really, really hard for them to do with all those road games. But, Rob, let's see here. What, do you, what team do you have? The Knicks, Joe, right now. Knicks they, right they now, They have too. to make the biggest push right now. If they want to make the playoffs, they got to show that they're still in there in the Eastern Conference. There's four teams above 500 in the, that Eastern Conference, and there is no reason why the Knicks should be number nine right now in ten, uh, nine or ten. You know what? This Knicks team—it's the same exact guys from last year, except you're missing your veteran players. They should be up there, but I don't understand what happened this year whatsoever. And you know what? Mike Woodson—they're saying he might be getting fired soon. And you know what? Maybe a coaching change is starting to get needed over there. Good point. Good point. Uh, before I leave, we're just gonna go over a couple last-minute things and. Uh, part of the one of the fun stories this week was the Patriots Spygate ring has been up for auction, and I just want to go over and vent my frustrations for Spygate. And the thing that I want to talk is it just it bothers me that we tend to sweep the Spygate thing under the carpet. I mean, there's no way that it doesn't tarnish Belichick's legacy. I just hate when I hear people just blindly fall and say he's the greatest coach of all time. You can't be considered the greatest coach of all time when you cheated. I mean, think of it this way. Did Vince Lombardi, did Don Shula, did Chuck Knoll videotape the opposing signals? No. I mean, Bill Belichick very well knew you're the head coach of the football team. You bear responsibility when things like that happen. And I just think that when I hear people say, and I give a lot of credit to Boomer Esiason because uh, part in the playoffs, they had an interview with Bill Belichick and how Bill Cowher was kind of kissing his feet and saying he's the greatest coach of all time. And everybody on that show was agreeing with him. And Esiason is the only one who, who brought it up and said the Spygate thing. It doesn't matter. A lot of people are always going to bring that up about him. And there's no question it doesn't tarnish his legacy. That's the first thing I always think about. And I'll never think of him as the greatest coach of all time because the greatest coach of all time doesn't cheat like that. Well, Rob, you're a Jets fan, so you have a little animosity towards the Patriots, but what are your thoughts on the whole Spygate Belichick legacy thing? I think it's unfair. I mean, yes, he did know all the calls, but either way, Tom Brady was effective in those games, but I still don't like the fact that he was a cheater to win those three Super Bowls. Yeah, I mean, at the three, I mean, I, I'm not a big conspiracy guy. They won those games, but it always makes you think, and uh, it'll always leave a little dark stain on those games. It really will. It'll always make people question them. Um, and the last thing, though, is Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, we've always been big Larry Fitzgerald fans on this show, but him restructuring his deal to help the Cardinals. Back in the day, he took a pay cut to keep Bolden. Larry Fitzgerald is just a class act, perfect guy to have on your team. Uh, it's just one of those little things. I And... Think about this. Since 2004, he's had 846 receptions, 11,000 yards, 87 touchdowns. And if you take Kurt Warner away from that, his quarterbacks have been Matt Liner, Derek Anderson, Kevin Cobb, and John Skelton, and this year Carson Palmer. There's not a lot of good quarterbacks in that list, so a lot of those stats have been put up with bad quarterbacks, and he, he's just been phenomenal his whole career, so props to Larry Fitzgerald. And before we go, we just want to give a little shout-out to the Iona men's basketball team. They've got a big weekend, some big games this weekend. Tonight they're playing Niagara, so and then Sunday they have a big matchup against Canatia, so good luck to them. It's going to be a I hope them the best. And that's going to do it for this episode. We'll be back next week with a big all-star game show and uh, tune in to us next week. Thank you for listening.